so we're going to be talking about the election. The election. Second Peter 1.10 Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. This introduction to the sermon this morning, the election, he's telling us about an election into the kingdom of heaven. Now in the United States of America, we have a president. We have a cabinet that has to be approved by the Senate. We have a Senate that's elected. We have a House of Representatives that's elected. We have governors that are elected. We have state representatives elected, state senate elected. We have county government elected. We have city government elected. We have supervisors of elections elected. You see what I'm getting at? There's a whole community of people that's elected to positions. And in that position, he says, make sure that your calling and election is sure. Now you know that we have two parties and we also have an independent party, a libertarian party, which usually don't get very many votes. The independent usually vote on either one of the two other parties, the represent the Republicans are the Democrats. We know about this party system. So that's where your calling is. But the election is the one that wins that position, right? That's the one who wins the votes. That's the one that secures the promise and the hope of that calling. That's the one that goes into all the details of governing and doing those things which are to be done. And you know, when we're called into the ministry of God, or called into working in the field of God, there are many positions, and a lot of us are called, but few are chosen. Our next election for president looks like about 15 or 20 people running off in primaries trying to get elected in 2020. They got so many people they can't even make up their mind who they want to support. And that's in one party. And so, you know, there are many called. Many called, but only one's going to win the election. And in Christ is the only way to win our election with God. You know, it doesn't matter what the talents are that you're given, how many talents you are given, you're given responsibility somewhere to serve the Lord. Each and every one of us have a responsibility to serve the Lord. Think about it. Even Jesus, when he was dying on the cross, had two people, one on either side. Both of them could have got saved. Both of them were in the calling. One accepted, one rejected. The thief on the cross that got saved has been a witness throughout all the ages ever since the cross. That testimony has stood there that he served the Lord, even though it was his dying moment. So you see, our election that we win could be in our last hours and it wouldn't matter as long as we serve God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. He doesn't give us a lot of responsibilities some of the time, but some people 
he gives a lot to. He said too much is given, much is required. To whom little is given, little is required. But he's a fair and just God. This first section of scriptures I'm going to talk about are few are chosen. Matthew 22 and 5. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and the remnant took his servants and treated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth and sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye fi shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said, unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Let's look at this story a little bit. People were called to a wedding. The people that were called, these were supposed to be the elite. These were supposed to be people of stature. What did they do? They made light of their calling. They didn't want that. They thought they had better at what they did because look at what they did. They made light of their calling. In other words, they thought it wasn't a big deal. They thought if I miss this wedding, it's no big deal. This guest of a supper, to be a supper at a wedding, it's no big deal. If I don't want to go, I don't have to go. Well, they were right. They didn't have to go. But boy, did they suffer for their choice. We don't have to go to heaven. God don't make us go to heaven. If we choose to be busy about our own things, doing our own ways, and make light of our calling, we won't fulfill God's will in our lives. And not only did they do that, but some of them took his servants, treated them spitefully, slew them. They'd done anything they could to defeat them. Didn't matter that they weren't pulling with them. They still tried to cut them off at every stance. Kind of reminds me of our political scene today. Where so many are so against trying to cooperate with our president and do things he wants to get government done. And he's done a real good job getting our economy going. They don't give him credit for anything. They just rise up just to stir trouble. So after there was nobody at the wedding, they all did their own thing. He said, go out in the highways and as many as you can find, bid to the marriage. I liken this under where the man went out to sow his field. And in the night, the wicked one come along and sowed tares among the wheat. Then when they were growing up, they said, what happened, Lord? Didn't we have good seed? He said, yeah, we had good seed. The calling was good. The calling was good. But some of them just tried to slip in the back way. Tried to join into the party. They weren't legitimate. They just wanted to be in the party. They wanted to have a social club. They just wanted to associate themselves with the wheat. They weren't real wheat. And in the end, like I preached last week, 
in the end, the angels separate out the tares from the wheat. And the ones that were left shine like the sun. You know the ones that shine in an election is the winners. It's always the winners that shine. That's the one that gets the job. Think about it. You have an opportunity here this morning. If you're not serving God, serve Him. He'll take you in. It's not too late. If you have never served God, turn your life over to Him and serve Him. It's all you got to do. I was talking to a friend of mine over in Madison. He was quadriplegic. And I said, Mr. Brearley, you have an opportunity. You're paralyzed. But you still have an opportunity to serve God. You know, before he died, he told me about getting straight with God. He told me about serving the Lord and getting saved. And as in the hospital, he had that testimony. And when he come out to the nursing home, he lived one more day. Got in on the last. Isn't that wonderful? That God don't make you serve an amount of time. He makes you want to serve him. Be part of it. Be strengthened in doing his will. And serving the Lord with a pure heart. It's not much to ask. But to ask that you have a pure heart. If you'll notice, if you have paid attention to the news, somebody in the government of Trump wrote a bad article about him in the New York Times and said how they were trying to obstruct and trying to defeat him. You know what that would be in the kingdom of God? A tear. They'd be cut out. And when God sends Jesus Christ to redeem us back unto him, he's going to take the right ones and he's going to leave the wrong ones. I want to be right, don't you? Amen. Let's go to our next uh, segment. Have to turn the video off. Now to start it back when I do our next segment. I love doing services like this.